died in 2015. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention it because Gunner and I were, were oh, we Gunner weren't Hansen great. Was really sweet, man. Nice yeah, guy. Yeah. We weren't the greatest friends, but we were friends. I would talk back and forth. And the last time uh, we had chatted together, uh, he had given me an offer to show up in the Chuckles and Laugh show. And I remember saying, well, that's, uh, that's not that much money. I'm going to save up for it. And you just didn't save up fast enough. Yeah. Didn't do it fast enough. Uh, and it, it is hard. And, and that's one of those characters, like, I really didn't want to know he was such a nice man. <laughs> because he's yeah. playing this serial killer that well, I absolutely adore. And then when you meet him in person, him. what the hell, man? That goes with a lot of the, the, the stars that we meet, especially at the Comic-Cons and stuff. The ones that you think are going to be the ultimate D-bags. Right. Those are the coolest people. You get to oh, sit yeah. down, talk to them. They'll have, you know, they'll they'll come behind your table. They'll talk to you for a good 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I went totally fan. I, I will admit, I went total fanboy for some some of the people. Some Henry of the stars. Winkler. No, Henry Winkler was <laughs> was not one of the ones. Actually, it was um, Eddie McClintock from Thirteen uh, Warehouse Thirteen came behind the table. Not this past year, the year before. Uh, he came behind the table. I gave him a T-shirt. I, I, I would have given him just about anything if he asked for it at that <laughs> First point. Firstborn child. I, I, love you. I but, think what we've noticed from Rock and Shock's years past, and especially being horror fans, is the people that p play the most vile, disgusting characters on the big screen are like the biggest teddy bears when you meet them in real life. And yeah, and then the nice guys are, are actually the D-bags. The the what I've noticed, wanna, what I've noticed from the people that really... Are, are really approachable and really humble. They almost feel bad about charging you for their autographs and for their merchandise. Yeah. They, they're kind of just like happy to be there. That's always been kind of a, what yeah, I've noticed is some of the best fans people. And be a part and, of the well, community. I got to say we're missing one person, which was a huge hit to science fiction world and to uh, well anything journalistic and television-wise. Leonard Nimoy passed away oh, yeah. this year. That, I mean, that was February, yeah. That yeah. was big. Even I mean. though uh, Eddie's mother saw him at uh, <laughs> Comic Con, <laughs> I didn't tell you that story. She did thought I. that was really him. She thought my, this Aww. year Comic Con on Friday, I took my mom, and <laughs> my mom saw this guy dressed like Leonard Nimoy. He was he was spot. pretty yeah. spot yeah, on. He, he was spot on with the mannerisms and the the, the way he spoke. And my mom approached me and said, Leonard Nimoy's upstairs. I want to get a picture with him. Like, yeah, he is upstairs. Oh, well, yeah, he's upstairs. <laughs> you got to take an <laughs> express <laughs> elevator to see him. <laughs> so finally, I was like, all, all right, Ma, before I call you, uh, even though I have it on Wikipedia right here, he died in February. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll go and talk to Leonard Nimoy. Wink, <laughs> wink. <laughs> <laughs> so we go up there, and I'm looking. I was like, son of a gun, he looks good. But, Ma, look, he died in February. That's not it. Did he try oh, to charge you for an autograph or for the picture, too? <laughs> you know what? It was for my mom. I would have given him five times what he was asking right. for because it was for my mom. You're, you're a nice Aww. guy. He went up to me and said, hey, you want to have your picture taken with me? And then he tried charging me five bucks. Damn. I'm like, didn't you just say you want a picture with me and you want to charge me five bucks? <laughs> How about I charge you five bucks and we wash it even? And the guy that could have made the most money there if he was charging was the real life Peter Griffin. I mean, that guy, speaking of social media fame, that guy is, is spot I, on. I got a picture yeah. with him, too. He was spot on, probably the best Peter Voice, Griffin. mannerisms, outfit. Even the outfit. Yeah. I mean, he was right there. And he's a, a, a relatively local. He's from New York. So he's not that far away. And I, I would really love to sit, be able to sit down and talk to him. Unfortunately, the only downside I saw with him is he would not break character. Yeah. So I'm trying to talk business. I'm trying to give him a business card. And he's talking about bird is the word. It's like, Sh <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Son of a gun. Take my card. And he, he just would not break character. Which I can admire, and at the other time, I wanted to punch him in the throat at the same time. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the chicken fight happens between Eddie and <laughs> Peter <laughs> Griffin and through the Civic <laughs> Center. <laughs> we are 12 minutes and 29 seconds away from the new year. We'll get back to some local music now. This band had a huge 2015. We're going to uh, switch genres here on Tony Jones' Rock and New Year's Eve broadcast on Rhode Island Free Radio on AM 1320 WARA. We're going to spin a little ska. Here's the copacetics. No, you can't get blood from a stone. But from a stone 
It's nothing more than lies, but that's only an ugly word when you make it seem that way. I'm, I'm reading between the lines, I'm searching for the signs hidden in this endless day. Local music. But before that, the unfortunately now defunct. Um, we heard Clouded Dream. What the heck is the name of that band? I can't remember. Colorblind. The unfortunately now defunct Colorblind. They before not, that, they then are we, not defunct. Semi are defunct, looking, right? Semi defunct. They are looking for a guitarist and a drummer, I believe. So pretty much, so they're defunct. Two thirds, <laughs> two thirds of the uh, band is missing. Yes, but the, they're looking. They're hopeful. The plight of the local act. The, the semi-defunct local act. You know, one thing we didn't get to, uh, you're listening to Tony Jones' Rockin' New Year's Eve broadcast on Rhode Island Free Radio on AM 1320 WARA out of Attleboro. Two minutes and 30 seconds until 2016. Of course, we want to thank you once again for spending your New Year's Eve with us folks checking in with me on social media all over the globe. Don't think for one second we don't appreciate it and don't think for one second the reason that we're here is because we do not appreciate uh, everybody listening around the globe. The one thing I didn't get to touch on, which I wanted to talk about during my air shift, was the fact that it is silly season. That's right. We are going into election 2016. I think it's going to be a barn burner. It's going to be a real knockdown, drag out fight. And as I mentioned way, way earlier at the top of the hour, 22% of people polled, they are willing to vote for quote unquote somebody else should it come to 